On Friday, Governor J.B. Pritzker commemorated Hispanic Heritage Month at the 34th Annual Illinois Association of Hispanic State Employees Conference and Job Fair. Pritzker touted the historic diversity of his state employees and their major achievements, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Pritzker also spoke about the asylum seekers who have arrived in Illinois, promising to do everything he can to take care of the migrants. In, and I know we're also waiting for Carmen. Um, good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, and welcome to the 34th annual uh, Illinois Hispanic Association of State Employees um, unveiling our history, Hispanic employment and state government. Yes, please. <laughs> My name is Roberto Valdez Jr., and I'll be your MC for today's event. Uh, currently, I am the Midwest Director for Policy for the Hispanic Federation, but I think most of you, if not all of you, know me uh, for working for the Latino Policy Forum for the past five years. Um, I also was the awardee of the IASE Leadership Award last year. I couldn't make it in person. So what I'm going to do is talk the next 20 minutes to give my acceptance speech. <laughs> kidding. Just joking. No, kidding aside, I do want to thank the IASE Board uh, for the recognition and for your mentorship these past uh, few years. Um, I also want to go ahead and um, do some housekeeping for folks who are looking for a physical agenda. We don't have one. It's actually a QR code. So if you're looking at the different bios and the uh, agenda for today's event, you'll find that by scanning the QR code outside. Do we have them at the tables? No, it's just outside. Is that correct? Just, it's just at the outside. So if you go at the registration table, there's a QR code that you can find and, and scan those. Um, I also would like to acknowledge some of our VIPs and dignitaries that are joining us today. Um, so bear with me here for a second. Uh, Deputy Governor Sol Flores, uh, Jenny Aguirre, um, Assistant Director for IDHFS, Mario Treto, Secretary of uh, Professional Regulation, Francisco Menchaca, Director for Financial Institutions, uh, Secretary Grace Ho from DHS, Dulce Quintero, Assistant Secretary for DHS, uh, Ronnie Patrick, Director for DHS Rehabilitation Services, Anthony Pacente, CMS Director, Mark Mahoney, CMS Assistant Director, Heidi Mueller, Director of Juvenile Justice, Senator Omar Aquino, Representative Jaime Andrade, Representative Dagmara Velar, uh, ISBE Superintendent Carmen Ayala, Christian Richards, Director of Employment Security, Carrie Thomas, Deputy Director of IDES, Alex Bautista, IDHR Deputy Director, Teresa Eagleson, Healthcare and Family Services, Barbara uh, Bareno Pascual, uh, Human Rights Commissioner, Janice Glenn, Human Rights Commissioner, Miraya Hurtado, IDES Deputy Director, Kelly Keese, uh, Illinois Commission on Equity and Inclusion Chair, Robert uh, Cantone, hu uh, Commissioner of Human Rights, and the Chair of the Human Rights Commission, uh, Mona Noriega. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Thank you for being here with us. And then quickly, would like to also acknowledge our partners and sponsors, starting with AFS CME Local 2081, 2854, uh, 1006, and 1610, as well as Rincon Family Services, and a special shout out to Latino Policy Forum. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Wonderful. So moving on quickly, um, I'm very excited and really looking forward to today's event. We have plenty of workshops and sessions planned for the morning and the afternoon, including a meeting with the agency, some agency directors uh, from the state. So that'll be uh, very informative and uh, interesting in having conversations around what is going on within the different agencies and what issues and topics you all want to bring up to uh, these leaders. Um, currently, the Latino community is 18% of Illinois' population and it continues to drive population growth and labor growth along with other things in this state. We continue to celebrate and recognize the Latino community's role during the pandemic uh, in being some of our most important frontline and essential workers, including those in our state government. Can we take a second to give those state frontline and essential workers a round of applause for their commitment and sacrifice? We would also like to recognize Governor Pritzker's administration as one of the most diverse administration in Illinois history, including not one, not two, but three
three deputy governors being Latino or Latina. Round of applause for that as well. We would also like to thank the administration for their commitment in meeting with IASE and other groups like MALDEF, LULAC, the Latino Policy Forum, in having conversations around outreach efforts as well as ways to bring more Latino representation into state government. That being said, there's still much work to do and room for improvement. Currently, approximately 8% 8, 8 of the state workforce is Latino. It is imperative that the administration continue its efforts to increase that percentage and double down on efforts to reach out to our community to ensure that their administration reflects the makeup of our uh, great state. With that being said, I'd like to go ahead and um, introduce the uh, DOC color guard for the presentation of, of colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Marlon Ramirez to give the invocation. Marlon? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God creating you for such a time as this. Dios te creó para este tiempo, para ser complemento de este estado de Illinois. Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we surrender this estate to you. We decree and declare love, life, and life. You are the center of this nation and this state and this city. Today is the fulfillment, the purpose, vision, and destiny of Ayase. Thank you for everyone. We pray today that God give you strength, knowledge, and understanding. 
And Father, we decree and declare over this beautiful estate your blessings, Father God. Thank you for everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything, we want to complete the purpose in this beautiful estate and city in Jesus' name. Thank you, Marlon. Now I'd like to introduce uh, EASA President Carmen Lebron to introduce the governor. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 34th annual IASE conference and training session. It is with my great pleasure to bring to this stage uh, a governor who's been very supportive of IASE, who is very supportive of diversity and inclusion in this state of Illinois. It is my great honor to introduce to you the governor of Illinois, J.B. Pritzker. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Please. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you to Carmen Lebron. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction. And it's great to see everybody this morning. I'm thrilled to be here for the annual Illinois Association of Hispanic State Employees Training Conference. 34 years strong. That's pretty impressive. And two, yeah. And uh, after two years of uh, COVID chaos, uh, I couldn't be happier to gather in person today to commemorate Hispanic Heritage Month and to celebrate the work that all of you do on behalf of the state of Illinois day in and day out. I must say, I don't know about all of you, but I, this has been really hard uh, for me especially because I'm a hugger. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't know how all of you are, but anybody else that way? Um, and so, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic just was uh, terrible in so many ways, but especially because just, you know, mental health for all of us, uh, it feels like we, we need the closeness of uh, touching and, you know, being close to each other physically. Um, but, you know, because of you, the children of Illinois can see someone who shares their background, their culture, who looks like them serving in important positions in our government. You are their role models, many of them, uh, setting an example for their futures. At every level, and at the highest levels of my administration, you are the success stories. I want to especially call out the uh, Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation Secretary Mario Tretto. Uh, our State Superintendent of Education, Dr. Carmen Ayala. And uh, Illinois Department of Human Rights Deputy Director Alex Bautista. And in my own office, the Deputy Governor uh, for Health and Human Services, Sol Flores. And Deputy Governor for Education, Martin Torres. Uh, I have been focused on making sure that we have a governor, government that is reflective of the diversity of our state. And we have the most diverse governor's office staff in the history of the state of Illinois and the most diverse cabinet in the history of the state of Illinois. And I couldn't be prouder that nearly 3,300 of our state employees belong to the Illinois Hispanic and Latino communities. Most importantly, I'm proud that our historically diverse staff has produced major achievements, from record-setting school funding to healthcare expansion to clean energy jobs that bring positive impact to the Latino community and all of our communities. Throughout the pandemic, our state's Hispanic and Latino communities, as well as our black and indigenous communities, have disproportionately shouldered the burden of uh, economic and health challenges from the COVID pandemic. We didn't throw our hands up in the air and say, well, that's just the way it is. No, together we got to work and we addressed the health inequities, in turn saving countless lives. 
We ensured that testing and treatment was free to all Illinoisans, regardless of insurance or citizenship status. We've transparently and intentionally worked to bring down positivity rates by surging resources and translating information regarding COVID-19 to reach more of our residents. And we established the COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force to analyze in real time the impacts of the pandemic on our medically and socially vulnerable communities. I'm proud of that. Even in the early months of 2020, in the early months of the pandemic, one in three of our state's public testing sites served a community with a Latino population that was at or greater than our state average. We restored funding to Illinois welcoming centers, utilizing them as hubs for free resources for our immigrant communities. And when our minority uh, owned enterprises were struggling, we implemented a small business loan fund focused on entrepreneurs of color and prioritizing these businesses in our business interruption grants program. None of this work would have been possible without all of you who offered your time and your expertise to build a more equitable Illinois in the face of unprecedented challenges. Over this past month, I have not gone a day without thinking about the asylum seekers who arrive in our city with nothing but the clothes on their backs and dreams for a brighter future for themselves and their families. Our new neighbors traveled for months without adequate food or medicine to flee oppression and persecution in their own countries. I personally met with mothers and fathers who shared their harrowing stories of walking with their young children through miles of dense jungle and crossing rivers with waters that rose to their chests to arrive in the United States to seek refuge and a better life. I want to remind all of you that that's kind of how my family came. Um, my family were refugees to this country many years ago. Uh, they were welcomed here. They had nothing. Uh, but my great grandfather went to a public school in Chicago, got a good education, and uh, ultimately became a lawyer uh, during the course of his lifetime. And, um, you know, and a couple of generations later, his great grandson is the governor of the state of Illinois. And, So the folks who are arriving here, uh, even though the inhumanity of the governor of Texas and the governor of Florida uh, had put them on a journey uh, to places that they didn't expect to go sometimes, um, you know, we here in Illinois, we're a welcoming state. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to shelter and make sure that they've got the food and health care that they need. Uh, and I'm proud of who we are. I'd like to say, you know, we're the, we're the land of Lincoln. We're the home state of Barack Obama. We were the first state to uh, ratify women's suffrage. We're the first state to uh, require the teaching of the Holocaust in schools. We're the first state to ratify uh, the end of slavery many years ago. I mean, we're a state of firsts. And we are a state that cares about our people and cares about all people. And human rights are at the core of who we are in the state of Illinois. The folks who are arriving here are the definition of resilience. Um, with no notice from those governors, our state had to mobilize fast to get these asylum seekers the support and the resources that they so desperately needed and deserved. And that's exactly what we, what you did. State employees from IDHS, from IEMA, from IDPH, from ISBE, and from HFS have come together to ensure that the moment asylum seekers walked off the buses that they were on, they were treated with dignity. And our staff on the ground were ready to supply the food and medical care and housing that they needed. And just two weeks ago, I had the, the pleasure of sending those children who've arrived here off to school one morning. Uh, and it was wonderful. The bus driver, beaming, by the way, excited. This is a woman whose um, who's, you know, family had been in this country for generations. She's white and European descent. Um, and as these kids boarded the bus, she just felt like she was doing the greatest, uh, you know, human rights effort uh, in the country, that, that she was doing something great for these children and their future, and she was. And I was so proud of that, and she was too. Um, Look, 
it's those moments. It's your moments, the highlights of the significant uh, effect that you have on these folks who arrived in our state recently um, that are changing their lives. And I hope in some ways changing our lives um, for the better, and they are. And for that, I really am grateful to all of you um, and to the people who are on the front lines helping the refugees that are coming to our country. In every part of our state, all of you are responding to the needs of all of our residents, from answering their calls and connecting them with what they need to collaborating with local organizations to bolster support for our most vulnerable communities. Each of you epitomize good government doing good work. And it's work that I know isn't easy. And so today, I hope you revel in your accomplishments. I certainly do. I want to just say, once again, thank you. I want to express my deep gratitude to all of you for the work that you do. I'm proud of our state government. I'm proud of our employees. I'm proud of the work that we do. Um, and keep at it. There's so much more to do. And enjoy the day together. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce my partner in governance, someone who is uh, not just someone who's a great leader, but also a good friend, and that's the Lieutenant Governor of our state, Juliana Stratton. If people on stage can stand up to take a photo with the Governor and Lieutenant Governor, please. You take the photo. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you, Governor Pritzker, for that warm introduction. Can we give him another round of applause as he heads out? I'm so grateful for how he leads our state with a vision for a better future that includes all Illinoisans. I also want to thank President Carmen LeBron, everyone at the Illinois Association of Hispanic State Employees, and all of you uh, who are passionate about ensuring our state government and workforce reflect the vibrant diversity of Illinois. It's so great to see all of you in person again, and I really appreciate it this morning's prayer. I was listening from the back because it truly is a blessing to be able to gather together after these last couple of years. Many of you have traveled from across the state to be here, to learn, grow, and connect with each other, to come together. And as the governor said in his remarks, we've seen time and time again how our state employees have come together when it matters most. How in the face of division, of cruelty, of our most vulnerable being marginalized, you stood up to show how powerful compassion and unity can be. To everyone here who spoke up and acted to ensure asylum seekers arriving to Illinois are safe and well, thank you. Your words and your efforts in this critical moment are so important, and we know that this is yet another example of the incredible contributions that you make to our state. This is what it means to make an impact. This is what we mean when we say that our diversity makes us stronger. And this is why Illinois is committed to not just saying that we are a welcoming state, but also acting so people from all communities 
feel welcomed here. That feeling is the comfort and of security and safety. It is the hope of education, career, and economic opportunities, of having access to the pathways that build the groundwork for a good life. And it is the joy that comes with having the resources and tools to thrive. It's feeling seen and heard and supported by your state government because you see people who look like you and understand your experiences in the rooms where decisions are being made. I know and each of you are committed to furthering that mission throughout Illinois. Ayasi has built a legacy, decades in the making, of advocating for Hispanic and Latino state employees, of shining a light on the incredible talents, skills, and insights you bring to work every day to better serve Illinoisans and push our state forward. And all of you, all of you are honoring that legacy our children are watching. Our children are watching. And in each of you, our children can dream big and see what's possible for their futures. The hard work and impact of IASI, of leaders from the diverse communities that you represent across Illinois, have made a tremendous difference in ensuring our state's diversity is celebrated. And when we join forces, we can go even farther. So from the bottom of my heart, I try to see every, make eye contact with all of you. But some of you are a little farther, but I'm, I see you. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do and all that you stand for. Our administration is so proud to stand with you, to recognize how diverse voices have paved the way toward progress, and to work together to take the next step that is built on equity and justice for all. We are one Illinois, and we will rise as one. Thank you, enjoy the day, and I'll pass it back over to Roberto.